For a few short weeks in the springtime, when the Elvers are running in the Union River, the small city of Ellsworth, Maine might rightly be called Eelsworth. But there are other sure signs of spring that are hard to miss. With the regular summer season looming, it's spring training time at Timbertina's Great Maine Lumberjack Show. In the springtime, as soon as the snow's gone, we all start getting together to chop. Tina Shear grew up in Wisconsin in a family of lumberjacks. But when she settled in this patch of forest straddling the Ellsworth Trenton line, she felt like she'd come home. This is the main forest, uh, the birthplace of logging in America. Everybody give me a great big lumberjack. Yo ho, one, two, three. <laughs> Tina's Lumberjack show runs every night during the summer. She's also been a contestant on CBS's Survivor, Nat Geo's Ultimate Survival Alaska, and Uncharted with Gordon Ramsay. But Tina thinks she's done with Hollywood, and it's not for lack of energy. It's just the way she rolls. I am not tired at all! I love chopping and I love throwing axe. When Hollywood calls, you have to really have to draw me out of here anymore because this is where my life is, on this property and in this state. So I love it. I'm happy right here. 3.57. Meanwhile, back at Maine Eel Trade and Aquaculture, it's business as usual. Where were these caught, Tim? Uh, all eel fishermen have swipe cards and every transaction is registered in real time with the Department of Marine Resources. The state knows exactly how many eels each fisherman has sold. $3,114. The state knows where the eels are caught and how much they are sold for. Each fisherman has a quota on their catch. Glass eels are among the most highly regulated fish in New England in part a reaction to the business's murky origins. There were no regulations, there were no licenses, no quotas, no rules. Mitchell Feigenbaum has been dealing in eels since the 70s. So I like to joke around that, you know, most of the people who founded this industry were sort of on that fine line between, uh, you know, legitimate and uh, black market. Prior to 2014, there were no limits on glass eel harvesting, and transactions were conducted in cash, lots of it. Bill Sheldon, sometimes referred to as the Elver Kingpin, would head out in his truck with $500,000 cash every night to buy eels on dirt roads and dead ends as fishermen brought them in. They'd be sitting there with suitcases full of cash, and. You'd have somebody there in a lawn chair with a shotgun, and you know, it was it was kind of crazy there for a while. But. Sergeant Colin McDonald, Maine Marine Patrol. For us, it was like pushing water with a broom. I mean, we were just dealing with illegal harvesters constantly. I mean, it got to the point where you know my family was threatened. It was a nightmare, really. Sign that one, Jill. Bill Sheldon, who once worked for the state's Division of Marine Resources, was flying high, driving his tricked-out pickup with the license plate Eel Wagon and dressing in furs that he trapped himself. He admits now that the lines got a little blurry. In 2017, Sheldon was indicted by a federal grand jury on charges of trafficking $500,000 worth of poached eels. He served six months in federal prison with three years supervised release. I made a mistake, no question about it. But Sheldon denies there was a vast trafficking conspiracy. I've been chasing these eels since 1970. I've never had a serious violation in all those years other than this one particular episode. These days, the eel world is a different place. Quotas are strictly enforced, cash transactions prohibited. And the worst assault Sergeant Colin McDonald is likely to see today is from an overly affectionate chocolate lab. Yeah, I don't know that I could have lasted that much longer.
So interesting. And Bill Sheldon's arrest was part of a four-year undercover federal operation. It targeted more than a dozen dealers up and down the Atlantic coast. Right, and press reports called it a smuggling ring. Bill Sheldon says it wasn't a ring because he didn't work with anybody else. His crime was uh, buying eels from an undercover agent. They were poached eels, and he misrepresented where they had actually come from, served his time, and then was free to go back about his business, as you say. Back about his business.